Welcome frustrated colonists of Rimworld. We are back in with a tutorial yet again. Today we're gonna talk about caravanning and how to get components. This tutorial will be covering those two essential things. How to kind of efficiently set it up and how to probably use it because it is two very very interesting things and a new aspect of point 17 to really use properly. Like, let's just take a look at the world. With the roads, the waterways, everything. It's it's a bit much, right? So components. Let's start with that. Components is something that you will always need a little bit or a lot. Kinda of depending on the mod you're having, or even if you're having no mods, components is something you always want to have a lot of. You will always need it. You will. It, you, you, it's like your bread for Rimworld. You need it for everything. So one of the ways you can get components is of course to make them yourself. But it's very slow, very inefficient, and uh, it tends not to be that good, right? So, we're gonna mix that and caravanning together, because one of the best ways to get components is caravanning. It really, really is. So, this goes back to one of my earlier tutorials that is kind of covering that you want to place your city next to some other friendly cities, like not too far from them, so you can at least go travel there. That is a that is the best thing, because this travel time here is pretty good. Yeah, 1.3 days. And if we're going to go back again, 2.3. First off, it's very essential that if you want to have some colonies to trade with, these triangles are the tribal villages, where the houses, they are the outlander unions, or they are the industrial era kind of uh, colonies. So they will have a lot of things that the tribal don't. The tribal will usually have pets, and food and bows and things like that. Nothing, nothing great at all. So make sure when you create a colony that you have some of these nearby and that they are friendly. But you cannot really trade with them if they're hostile, right? So with that covered, you got the basics down to do some trading, you can get some components, everything is good. So what do we do? Well, first off, you need animals. We have muffalos. Of course you have muffalos. They're cute and fluffy. If you're in doubt if your animal can be a pack animal, they will have this trait under the eye that says pack animal, yes. If they are not a pack animal, this entire tab will just not be there. It's not like it's saying pack animal, no, it's just not there. But in generally, dromedaries, muffalos, they are the things that you wanna you wanna use for this. So you have your muffalos, you have your training things. Then what I would recommend doing is something very specific. First off, as you might know, we like to trade with food. Because having a ton of food is uh, essential for your colony. If you have way too much, it's good because you will not run out. Plus, food can be worth in between 8 till 10 silver per piece. That's a lot of money. That's how we made this money on this playthrough. It's by the way an old playthrough that I've tried to find again. Uh, I wanted to highlight a new map, but um, mods broke it a little bit, so we are fixing it. But, we got the food here, and that is what we are trading. That's our thing we are trading with. So we have a caravan spot in there. Normally you would put it in the middle of your, your storage area. This is because they'll go out, gather the muffalos. Let's just start it. They will gather the muffalos, form caravan, and get them to the packing spot. So that's why it's very essential that, um, that you do this. But before we do that, we're just going to set up a little test here. I will do this and they'll go get them, right? We want to take our muffalos. Just take whatever you want to and, um, and some items. We wanted to trade some food. Let's say we're going to sell 200 because why not? And the essential part about caravanning It'll be a little, this will be a little bit back and forth because there's so many small aspects to it. But for now, we placed a caravan spot where we want it to be, right? Then you will want to take the things you want to trade, of course. And you might also want to take some additional silver, depending on what you're going to get. If it's just components, you, it, you don't need to bring this much, not at all. But we're going to bring a little bit of uh, things to sell. We're going to bring some silver. And then 
For caravanning in longer terms, yeah, you can create pack of survival meals. They are nice, they'll keep you alive and everything. But essentially, if you really want to caravan effectively, also this is kind of takes a long time to make, just grab some potatoes. Like, just, just grab some potatoes. If you have any kind of raw resource, just grab that. It doesn't weigh that much. Um, and that's essentially it if you just want to go for, like, the components. If there's anything else you want to sell, of course grab that, but no real need. Make sure you leave to the correct side, which I think is southwest. Sure. It wasn't. Never mind. <laughs> that can happen. So, what they are going to do now is the people that we set on to caravanning, they will go around and gather the muffalos. So, right now our muffalos are a little bit all over the place. I think we actually just returned from a caravan, didn't we? Yeah, with components and money. Um, but that's okay. So what you want to do, if you have a large map and your, your muffalos or drummed areas, whatever you're using is all over the place, what I normally do is that, as you can see here, I made a caravan area. So I generally just made a zone where I want them to pack the muffalos or deliver the resources afterwards so instead of you running back and forth to the muffalos from out here to out here with the things just have your muffalos go to where your things are they'll pack it way faster we used to have a caravan spot right there let's try to make them do that but that is something i would really recommend using the using the zones manage areas you kind of set up where you want the mufflers to be. Right now you can see we're getting the mufflers down here. Just running up and getting them. If I would have done this a little earlier, the mufflers would have run here themselves. That would have saved us some time. But it's okay. It's okay. So, you got your mufflers, you got your zone, you got the things you want to trade, and you're now forming a caravan. This is all great. If you noticed, we sent six people with us here. There are some very, very specific numbers you want to caravan with. Not like specific, but, but kinda. There's a kind of a solo thing you can do. You can easily go and trade with just a caravan with one person. Just one person. It might, it might work really, really well. But I would not recommend it. Depending on how many people you got in your caravan, if it's one, two, three, four, five, or six, depending on the number you have and the difficulty you are playing on, if you get ambushed, it will be at a size compared to that. So if I have six people and get ambushed, I will have way more attackers than if I just have two. So ideally, you just want to go for one. Also, because you don't want to put all your colonists out on a trading trip. What if you get attacked? Yeah. So you can't just go with one person caravanning. This is something I usually do, but I will not recommend it until late game. Because what I do is that it needs to be a good shooter. Um, preferably, the person needs to have a little bit of bionic stuff that you, either with a mod made, just found. This playthrough here, we didn't, we didn't play with the let's create bionics. We just found or bought all of this. Hence why we are missing a lot of limbs. But what you want to do is have your best shooter then do it and also bring a doomsday rocket launcher. Right now I don't have any, I use them all. But the thing is, if you're gonna go trade alone and you bring your best shooter and a, a rifle and a doomsday rocket launcher, then that doomsday rocket launcher is pretty much a I win button. Because whatever is gonna attack you, you can shoot off the doomsday rocket launcher and fend off the attackers. And unless you have very bad RNG, then you're not gonna get attacked or ambushed more than once. But, this is still mid late game here, we don't have any, any, Doomsday Rock Launch at all. So we send six of our somewhat well armored people that should be able to, to stand their ground. They have some rifles, some good weaponry. Oh, we actually have Shaggy! Okay, we have a Doomsday Rock Launcher. That's just from the last caravan. Shaggy was uh, sent out as a soul alone caravaner last time. That's why he only has uh, the Doomsday Rock Launcher equipped. That's really all you need. 
But if you don't have that, I would recommend sending five to six, four to six people, depending on how strong you feel they are. And when it's this sort of a distance, like like we just said, it's just it's under a day. The entire trip is 2.2 .2 days. I will probably not get attacked there. Probably not. So you might be thinking, what evil trick? Um, you are trading now and you have 135 components. Do you really need to do this? No, I don't. I, I, I don't. I don't need to do this right now. Not at all. Because I'm not using that many components. In this playthrough, as I said, I'm not crafting bionics. Bionics takes a lot of components. So, I'm actually good. I'm good. I also never really create turrets, that's just not my style. Uh, I like traps and other things. But if you are just lacking components, you should do this. Caravanning is one of the best ways to get that. In one of these, if you haven't traded with these yet, you haven't done that yet, you can easily trade 40 to 60 components per base. Yeah, that's a lot of components. And if you are in a, quite a predicament early game and also want to do caravanning there, that is also doable. Remember, everything in RimWorld is RNG, but everything in RimWorld is also calculated out from numbers. Those numbers are how long have you been playing this current map? How much wealth do you have? The more wealth you have in your base, the bigger the attacks, rates and such will be. And of course, the bigger the difficulty. Those three things, amount of days, wealth and difficulty, will determine how hard your attacks can be. And ambushes. I've had ambushes with just a hare or two tortoises. I'd also had them with the 40, 40 tribes people. Um, but that was a lot bigger. That's a whole other story. If you want to go trade, Three, let's say 30 50 days that is very doable and you could probably do it with at that point you might have four to six colonists and at that point you might want to send four and that is the, the early game caravan is very unsafe but if you really need something especially components the bases will always have components the trading bases you can do that what I do recommend there is, it's just the same though. Take your most armored, best equipped people for the task and uh, ensure you have everything for it. If you have any kind of rocket launcher, not incendiary, rocket launcher, triple rocket launcher, booster rocket launcher, which you probably will not have that early, but if you have anything like that, anything that just makes you strong, essentially take the strongest things with you. All these people had weapons, but if I wanted to, in the in the selection screen for creating a caravan, after selecting people and muffalos, I could just have taken a doomsday rocket launcher if I had one. So you would, by standard, have your rifle equipped and not your doomsday rocket launcher. That is usually what I would do, just to take that with me, and that'll be good. But we don't do that right now. And that's pretty much it. That's how you do caravanning. It's not a big thing, but there's a small minor tips and things that you might want to be aware of. One thing is that right now we are in the beginning of September. Depending on where you are on the world globe here, it can be pretty damn cold or hot all the time. So be very careful. Be very careful. There's a lot of things to think about in the world travel here. I usually build in desert or arid cropland. The main reason for this, oh, wrong one, is that the movement speed on every dropland, no matter what year or weather it is, it's always one hour per tile. Same on these, always one hour. Where on Timberd Forest, where we are in right now, it's 1.7, and in winter it will go, go all the way up to 9.7 hours per tile. Instead of under one day, just this, Will take five days so be very aware of where you are also jungle if you want to trade efficiently don't settle in jungle jungle is fun and everything and you can settle at the edge of it but like the movement speed is very slow 
So if you gotta go through a road throughout the entire jungle, it's gonna take a lot of time. So be cautious about your tiles. And Tempered Forest here, in winter, from the middle of September to the end of December, it will start to get very slow. From the middle of September and onwards, it will just go slower and slower and slower. And from December and onwards, it's just capped at the max movement speed. Or minimum movement speed, rather. So be careful about that, so you won't send out a caravan that will then instantly, or on the way back, just take more time. Because this would take 1.2 day, days, but if I'm lucky and I hit winter on the way back from down there, you know, that's that's gonna make the trip four times longer on the way back. Which means uh, food, um, among other things, will not, probably not hold on. So be careful. Be very careful. Well, that pretty much covers this tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to, if you've got any questions about this or any other tool, just find me on Twitch. There's a link in the description. Else, just leave in comments if you want other tutorials, need some tips and tricks, or anything at all. Thanks for watching this video, and uh, see you in the next. And see ya. Watch Trader Colonists in the next one.